Uh, so I suppose even during my uh, undergraduate time, I sort of found quantum mechanics a really interesting theory. Um, and that's why I chose um, something called a doctoral training centre that was based on quantum mechanics. Uh, the first part of that was some taught courses. There was a course on quantum information. Um, and during that, the lecturer explained Bell's theorem. And I was just like blown away by that. I thought it's really cool. It's a really strange situation that, at least in the UK, you can get an undergraduate degree in physics and never learn Bell's theorem. Um, so I came to it pretty late. But uh, I thought that looks good, and it's something I want to find out more about. Um, I'm very open-minded about that question. Uh, I, I haven't found any of the answers that people have given totally convincing. Um, the idea I'm most sympathetic to at the moment is probably the idea that in some sense it's a theory of knowledge or a theory of information in some sense. Um, and so the sort of version that comes closest to that is probably this sort of very operational type formulation of it that's become popular in the quantum information community. Um, but I'm a bit unusual in the quantum information community in that I don't really want to stop there. I want some deeper explanation of what's going on. Um, and hopefully within that deeper explanation, we'd understand why quantum mechanics is such an effective theory um, when you are talking about the sorts of things that we can seem to talk about in operational quantum mechanics. Um, but if something like that doesn't work out, then you know maybe something like many worlds or <laughs> Bohmian mechanics would have to be where you go, but I'd, I'd rather like investigate every possibility first. Uh, I think in some sense it must be. Um, it, it's kind of a tricky question because uh, you know, there are some views of probability where we're trying to say that a probability is a property of the physical world is almost just a category error. Um, so exactly how that's going to all come out in the wash is not at all clear to me. But I think uh, just from Bell's theorem, we know that the, the sort of randomness we see in quantum mechanics must in some sense be fundamental um, because if it wasn't, there would be a way to communicate faster than light. So um, I think it is special in quantum physics, but I have no idea what that actually means. <laughs> I, I think uh, it, it's difficult to say at this point, but um, what, one thing I, I actually find it quite comforting in a way that um, uh, sometimes you're, you're looking at some weird quantum phenomena and you start to think, oh, well, hang on, maybe that I'm just thinking about this in the wrong way. Maybe there's some simpler way to understand this. Um, but Bell's theorem provides such a, a clear cut way in which um, the predictions we get from quantum mechanics just differ from anything we would have got in the sort of theories that we had before quantum mechanics, um, that it, it almost gives us the kind of security that we are really onto something interesting here. Um, and uh, my, uh, one of my supervisors likes to say that in a million years' time, we'll all have forgotten about quantum mechanics, but we're still going to remember Bell's theorem. Um, in some sense, it's kind of a real milestone on our, like, uh, sort of finding out things about the world, like the fact that the world violates Bell inequalities is something we found out and it's something that's not going to change. Um, as to uh, exactly what it means for our view of the world, I think that's something we're still trying to come to terms with and understand. Um, I think it's sort of unfortunate that um, 
there isn't much traffic between philosophy and physics. Um, uh, and I think both sides probably have to share some of the blame for that. I think there are physicists that uh, tend to sort of quickly just dismiss something as, oh, that's just philosophy, that means it's not interesting. Um, and I think there are philosophers who just don't spend enough time learning about what f the, the stuff that physicists have figured out. Um, I think uh, we, we sort of shouldn't forget that uh, science was originally called natural philosophy, right? It was just a method for doing philosophy. You start with a philosophical question, you want to know what the world's like, you, I don't know, you want to know what colour is or something. Um, and one method for answering those sorts of questions, and it turns out a very successful method is to do experiments and to build theories. Um, but ultimately, there should be no shame in, in trying to use the results of that process to actually answer the original philosophical question that you started off with. Um, so, uh, I think the role of philosophy in physics should be exactly to, to sort of keep that process going. So it should be to raise new fundamental questions that lead to new experiments and to new theories. And then it should be to take the results of that and feed that back into the, the answers to those questions.